so about last night. <laughs> um, okay, so did we close the lid? No, you know what? That'd be a fire thing if we had like a thing we did every week or every couple weeks, and it was just called So About Last Night. Like, it kind of uh, just put listen, some context. Anything you yeah. want, we can do it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've always said I'm not a fan of cancel culture because they've tried to cancel me. Cancel, cancel culture, bro. This is from the main person that's been canceled that will not be canceled, you know, period, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you something. Obviously, as a celebrity, there's a lot of people that are around me that can influence me, and no human being is immune to their surroundings. There's a lot of people around Kim that can influence her. You know, as she's making certain decisions, she's just looking for safety and a, a safe place to be because I do these ideas where like, man, if I'm the only person that's not with Hillary, then she's getting like attacked so much, telling me can't wear the hat. Telling, and she just, as a woman, women just want security and comfort, but you know, what she'd ultimately like is just your her, her husband, but for her husband to play the role of what's happening in Hollywood already. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. Mm -hmm. You know, you got yay, and I'm here to improve on the situation. Everybody's still going, eat is cool, but you know, I just need to explain to people just really clearly. The way people look at, like, say, if you got big corporations, they look at superstars like let me see how i'm going to use your influence to get my agenda across mm -hmm. on you know on do daily. you feel like you were used yeah but you know my grandfather said you know make yourself useful if, you know you can't be used useless and but, you know this is what if you, you you're not living in california unless you're presenting yourself to be of use when someone like gives their demo gives their resume they say like i can be of use to you so then you could be used it was i misused it's like maybe so. I'm sitting here with the Balenciaga jacket on right now, so it's it's okay. You know, another thing is like with North, she 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 in basketball practice right now. We got top basketball players going to, you know, McDonald's All American and you know, already getting recruited. It's all kind of recruiters be coming by our high school games. So we got the coaches and I, and I appreciate the coach and the coaches that we already have, but we gotta turn up a knob. We're not gonna just deal with like this, oh get this is just okay because for the fact that my kids do are well off, they still have to, you know, learn how to make things that are excellent. There's so many children, I mean, you you meet them, especially out here in Hollywood, and you're like, man, them kids, they never been pushed or focused, or they always knew they was gonna have something. And so North loves basketball, where she gotta get that coach, but it'll be a thing where it's just little like being ignored, you know what I mean? Like now it's three, four times, and you know, Justin LaVoy that put together our basketball squad. It's like, I got the coach and they're just being ignored. Then we going through the nannies and it's just like that kind of time. We not on that time. Mm -hmm. And that's the point of this. You know, I'm not, we ain't trying to go no full, you know, all respect due. I'm not, I got to use these names as an example. But my biggest thing is when I be on my yay about to tweet, da da da, I don't tweet anymore. I'll be like, we not going full <laughs> Will and Jada, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody got problems on both sides and it don't need to be aired what out. It, okay, you mean put it all out there? Yeah, it ain't about putting all out and being aired out. It's just like, look, certain things, look, it's just not finna happen. And I'm at this point where I'm gonna step up. Because actually I called Noriega first. I was like, man, this is happening. Ah, and Noriega was just like, man, he, 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 he just told me just like, bro, you know, they're gonna use this against you. They're gonna use the paparazzi thing against you. They're gonna run this narrative and this. And I'm like, man, people just gotta hear me talk. Even if I go and talk to Charlemagne for uh, 45 minutes and argue with him and, you know, him telling me, man, Pete's not the target and this and that. And like, uh, at the end, he'll still say, your, you know, your voice is the most powerful thing you have. And it works in a few ways. It works like visually, it works performance wise works through art curation, it works on music, of course, videos. And I think I give a good interview now. I think people can see me, feel me. I've been through some things because I'm not just all rich, blah, 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 look, it's perfect. Like this is a great moment in my life. What my Christian brothers will come to me and say, it's like, thank God for these moments. Thank God for the, the pain, you know, thank God for this, because in that, he is strong when we are low. You know, when we at our lowest, that's when God can come to his highest. And 
What floor? What's what's floor of this? What floor is this? Where Hollywood unlocked it? The penthouse. It's on the highest floor. It's on the highest floor. You, you you know what I'm saying? I didn't even know he was gonna be here today. And my cousins were saying, come by here yesterday, but I, I was finishing. You're working. I was finishing that verse for your girl, you know what I mean? Like I always believed in her since since she was on the show. Period. I, I told you the other night at dinner, I said when we were at Chris's house and and Cardi was there and you said to Cardi, you're my hero because you can say whatever you want and not be judged. And it was an interesting moment because you both are very similar in that sense that you say whatever you think, um, but you, you'll get attacked sometimes or most times and then she'll get praised, but she gets attacked too. Why do you think that is? You think people just can't handle your truth? Yeah, well, no, I think that you know what? I don't have a thought on that. That's a really good question. I feel like people just be coming up with an answer quick. Oh, I think that you'd be, I'll be in the elevator on the way back. I didn't think that, <laughs> you know? No, I just, I, I feel like it's love, man. People just love, people love celebrities. It's a gift and it's a blessing. It's a responsibility to be famous. And a curse sometimes. Well, you know, it's all how you look at it. It's, I just, what I'm saying, it's like, thank God for those low moments too, because that's where, God gonna show up, you know, God's showing up right now amidst everything that's happening. You know, my family, they got their approach. Like she's, uh, my cousin was like, you know, I'm running a little bit late. I got to put on some makeup for this meeting, mm -hmm. you know? So she's showing respect to Kim going into this meeting. And of course, Kim as a woman is going to say certain things where, you know, they're going to side with that. They're going to be, oh man, that reminds me of my, Baby daddy did that same thing. I feel you, Kim, because women love Kim. You know, she is just a poster child of somebody, a mom, a lawyer. Like, can't nobody deny that everyone loves Kim. So when you get a situation where my family go up there, they're like, wow, we're sitting here talking to Kim and she's uh, someone that we really look up to. So even like when Wack had... Um, you know, had said the said he had the the tape. Um, he he said to me, you know, as a black man, you know, it was the beginning of the conversation, and pulled on that string right there. So I'm sure when Kim met with my two cousins, she said, well, as a woman, you know, as the beginning, and that was her. And then we get into this thing. But I love with like Mark Burnett. I was riding with him, and he's like, yo, you. If you ever plan to like run in or do anything, you can't, you gotta stop using, you know, we always say that term like white supremacy. I feel like to say that we're giving it too much power. I was meeting with the head of Coachella today because obviously right here, boom, we're announcing that um, head, headlining Coachella and it's gonna be me and Sunday service mm -hmm. separately. You know, we're doing both of those and so we're just talking about some of the design, but I liked his perspective where he's like, man, you know, I couldn't even tell if some of my friends are Democrats. I, I couldn't tell if some of my friends were Republicans. See with us, we are forced for that to be thrown in our face to, for us to judge each other. Also, whether we're Democrat or Republican and also whether we're rich or poor, you could be in an environment where everyone got, has money and you, you can't really tell how much money someone has. Whereas with us, it's like, we have to show our money. We have to show our politics also. That's another thing. You don't have, like, I wore the hat for the freedom of, of opinion. You know, my mom was born into a drinking fountain. She was told what fountain she could drink in. And she fought. My grandfather, my father, my family fought for the right to vote. And now I fought for the right to choose who we vote on because the black vote is just this. And look, we love Democrats. Democrats know how to talk to black people better than Republicans. So it would be good if we could just comfortably be within this party that was switched to become our party, you know, in the 60s because we used to be Republicans. And um, did you ever reconcile why people were upset about you wearing the hat, though? Because I mean, honestly, like, I, I mean, not to get too deep into politics, I look at like all the conversation, even that Joe Biden was having with Charlemagne saying that if you don't vote, 
if you vote Republican, you ain't black. But then now that they're in office, I really don't see the policies being passed to benefit the people that you were going out fighting for. So I get it. I understand, you know, the frustration or the guilt and the games that people play. But I was wondering if you reconcile why people were feeling the way they were feeling about you wearing the hat. Yeah, you know what? I will say I take responsibility for the, the fact that it hurt their feelings, mm -hmm. that it hurt people's feelings, you know? And I also say, I believe now that people, not just black people, just across the board, they're realizing like, yo, you have to let yay be yay. <laughs> you gotta push it. Like me and Drake was gonna wear Virgil Jordans at the show and we had them, we was backstage. And when I put them on, it ju I just didn't look like yay. Mm -hmm. I look more like yay with these these boots. I got this line on the, the song with Game where I say, I wear these boots uh, even in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, cause how can something change if we're in group think? Mm -hmm. There's gonna be someone who doesn't take the program. And so I take accountability for when I've been ramped up and not had the right mood and attitude, but the, it was necessary for me to not take the programming and then to not, you know, take the bullying and the manipulation. They want all celebrities in a position, basketball players, rappers have to say, yo, we're voting in the same party as the media control party, which is the Democrats. The majority of people who own the media are aligned with the Democrats. So if you don't align with them, they literally is like, yo, we're gonna, you, your career is gonna be over. That was really the biggest reason why I went to the hospital. Every day, imagine everyone in your life telling you your career is going to be over if you don't vote for Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why well, am I going to vote for Hillary Clinton? I don't have no connection, you know, to this person. I just, so, and, and, why, and why do you have to defend your right? Mm -hmm. Why do you have to defend your right? What little rights we got? We got like 13th Amendment in the Constitution. They got literal amendments only based on... <laughs> aimed at black people to lock us up, but then we're defending the rights that we fought for. What was the point of fighting and winning to vote if you got to defend who you gonna vote on? Like I always had a difference of opinion to everyone in grammar school, everyone in high school. And I see, I think, you know, a lot of times I'm ahead of my time, 10, 10 years ahead of my time, 20 years ahead of my time. And as a leader and a visionary, I got to take a responsibility to be able to communicate to the people who follow me, where are we going, yay? Where is this going? And there was a blurry time where people are just feeling lost. They didn't know where they was going. Even for Kim, she's like, where are you going? Where are you going? I know how to get there. I know, I know what this is. I've been going here my whole life. You're talking about building sustainable communities and all that and how this is gonna be you know, better. And people just don't understand sometimes where I'm headed. I have to take that responsibility as a visionary to move just a little bit slower, stop, explain, you know, where we're going. And I feel that there's a lot more people along for the ride now. Cause I am a, I am a future president. It might not be two, three years from now. I might not, but you know, ain't, ain't never been a situation I went in that I didn't make it better. I'm an industrialist. I opened the first sportswear factory in America since World War II, where we're printing up the phone run runners giving jobs to Americans. We own our second factory, we have one in Cody, and now we have one in California. But 